Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another Raider Nation Unlimited. I'm your man, Wasted. Just wait for everybody to get in here, man. You know what I mean? So we can have our sit down. Our afternoon sit down. Salute to everybody in the chat. Let me see who's up in the chat right now. Wait for a few more people to pull up. You know what I mean? And then, you know, if, no, if people don't pull up, you know how I say, man, listen. Yo, we can roll with 50. We can roll with 1,050. It don't matter, man. Whoever here with me is here with me. They're going to get this, you know, <laughs> we going to come in here and do our thing, man. Talk some Raiders and shit. Wait a minute. So you put some of these on the screen right now. Salutations to everybody in the chat, though. Rate of God, what's good, Wasted? Won't be on your live today, physical therapy, but keep pushing, bro. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Y'all, I'm, I'm so happy to be here today, man, because you know what? The content will just don't stop, and shit is happening, bro. Like, a lot of people are having problems pumping videos out, but our little ethos, you know, we don't have any problems. We always got something to talk about, you know what I mean, y'all? My brother, 808 Raider, thank you for the love, bro. Love the show, Wasted. You speak the truth, my brother. No BS, straight fast. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. I'm going to take that pat on the back right here, man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. The flying, wonderful Sarah Phillips. Thank you for pulling up as usual. And Sarah, we're going to take care of your wrench like right now. I, gotta, I have to go out of the program I'm using to do it. And you know, I told you I'm a boomer. I'm a boomer tech. I'm going to fix it. Got to have you up here. Queen Raider Red, my homie. Appreciate you pulling up, Queen Raider Red. Yo, I got to pick your brain about the gram again, yo, too. Word up. Thank you, yo, for, 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 for giving me that game, too, the other day. Morgan Freeman is in the house, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Morgan, Morgan Freeman is in the house. <laughs> my man. Chronicles for the Black. It's time. You damn right. What's up, OG? <laughs> Raider Ruckus. Let's go. Let's go. All right, y'all. Now, listen. We got a few things that we're going to be getting into. <laughs> Fion Crockett. What up, bro? <laughs> Yo, fuck you. Listen, man. I can't help it because I can spit a few, spit a few um, imitations out. Dominique, what up? Jonathan Cannon, right? What up with it? Cooling, brother. Cooling. All right, y'all. Bill Gates is in here. Yo, Waze, please tell me you have watched Justin Ross's tape. Boy was a superstar when Trevor was thrown to him. Yeah, I watched this tape, bro. Like, I like Ju I like Justin Ross, bro. The thing about it is, is that I, I don't like him enough to take him in the first or the second. To me, he's a third round pick based off of the the wide receiver talent in this draft. Would would I would I like say for instance if they trade down and they had more or traded up in the second? Would I trade it back into the second round to try to get Justin Ross? Yeah, I definitely would. I don't I don't consider him a first rounder. That's just me though. Cash Little Raider, my homie. That's right, man. I gotta get my I gotta stay hydrated, bro. I gotta stay hydrated, man. Queen Raider, I, I'm doing excellent. You know what I mean? I'm just glad to be able to talk Raider football, my peoples, man. That you know what I'm saying? Y'all up in here. We got 61 in the chat so far. Hopefully, we get more people to pull up on us on this lovely Friday evening. You know what I'm saying? But you know how it is. Hey man, listen, bro. Great. Hey, listen, man, that great value water is the thing, man. You need that, brother. Now, look, we got a few things that's happened today, y'all. No more stalling. Let me, let me get into it, right? Now, what we have is we have a hiring here. We have a defensive line hire, coach hiring, which is dope. You know, Frank Oakham, a lot of people have talked about it. We're filling out our coaching staff. As we all know, Rob Marinelli – Retired. Rob Marinelli is one of the all-time great defensive line coaches in the history of the National Football League. And shout out and salute to Rob Marinelli, man. He has had a great career 
he is definitely one of the all-time greats, you know. He developed Max Crosby, and he had us looking like we had one of the best defensive lines of football this year. So, you know, we had to go, and we had to go out and go get Frank Oakham. Now, Frank Oakham has only been a coach for like three years. You know what I mean? He's a former NFL player, but he's done terrific with the Carolina Panthers. He's, he also has some college pedigree, too. But, uh, you know, he's going to join the defense along with um, our passing coordinator, um, passing game coordinator, Jason Simmons. So we have a lot of strong ties to the Carolina Panthers. So what we have is we have a wide net of players who are out there in the free agent market that are going to be available. And we have a lot of their former coaches on our staff. And for my money, I haven't seen it in action yet, but I think we have one of the finest, you know, coaching staffs out there now. We have so, so many great guys that have done a lot of work in this league. They've been successful in this league. You got the Rob Ryans of the world. You know what I mean? You you have all these. You got the Patrick Graham's of the world. Patrick Graham is not going to long. He's not going to be with us long. You can just see he's a Yale guy. He's a smart guy. He knows how to pick his staff, man. So I'm telling you, we are in for some good coaching. Now, if you can get the assortment of players that go along with that, then we're in for a good season. So hopefully, man, look, man, we, 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 we're in the money right now, man. We're in the money with Oakham. He's going to help that defensive line, and I'm hoping that we go into the draft because this is a deep draft for interior linemen, that we go and we go and grab some of these young linemen in the middle rounds and develop our own star linemen. You know what I mean? Like That's what the Raiders have been missing over the last few years is that we're not developing our own talent in every free agency – we get disappointed because we have so many freaking needs and us as Raider fans, we're thinking like, okay, yo, why wouldn't he come here? He's going to start. He's going to get paid. Yo, he don't got it. Like, but yo, a lot of these guys put a premium on winning because the more you win, the more money you make. And people want to win. Nobody wants to fucking play and get their head kicked in every week, man. So it's a good thing that we're going to have a winning environment here. We've also brought in a practice squad player named Jordan Meredith for the Rams practice squad. I'm not going to sit up here in front, y'all, like I've never heard of this guy. I've never heard of him. Check this shit out, man. This is a guy that they're just bringing in as a, as a practice squad body. They're filling their practice squad out. And hopefully something come out of it, right? But the most important thing that we're going to get to today, I want to see if anybody wanted to pull up with me today, but I'm, I'm going to run this thing myself, is the top – free agents under 25 out there this is something that nobody's talking about like for me the way that i go about my free agency is is that i have a few metrics to the way that i pick free agents you know a lot of people they hear names and they're like oh let's go get Tevante adams let me go get chandler jones but the way i look at free agents is how old is this guy how much is this guy making what's his injury history has he been in trouble or not? Is he is he is he a, a cancer? Is he going to be getting in trouble? That's how I look at free agents. So to me, good free agency is getting a free agent that is going to make his ascension while he's playing for you. And then when he gets to his next contract, then he's too rich for your blood and you move on and you let him go elsewhere. See, I'm never a proponent of going to get a Yannick Ngakwe. That's been at a, a several different places. And then now I get him and I'm paying a premium money. So, you know what I mean? So, we're going to go over some of these guys. But before we do, um, let me read some of these chats. Daniel Kim. Yo, I don't think Olave is a good pick at 22. Too early and other needs and better and better needed than Olave. Bro, I don't either. I'm not a big Olave guy. I'm not a big Ohio State guy. I know that's that. Listen, there's no scientific rhyme or reason behind me feeling that way, man. But going all the way back to Ricky Dudley. I am not an Ohio State guy. It's like it's too many ebbs and flows into whether them guys hit or not. It's really, really weird. You know what I mean? I, I am not an Ohio State guy. I, I do not like Ohio State players. I don't know what it is, man. Kerry Williams, we need more defense. Defense wins games, and they keep our offense off the field. Look at the past Super Bowls. That's facts, bro. I've been saying that all offseason, bro. Everybody, when they do their mock drafts, they go and go get the shiny car. They go and go get all these wide receivers. I say dollar cost average with all of this shit, right? Dollar cost average, man. You want to get the most bang for your buck. So, yo, these these guys are commodities, right? They you know, their skills are a commodity. So, you're at your best when you're at the youngest part of your career. So, the way I looked at it was, listen, 
that's why we get a wide receiver in the first round because we have a deep interior draft so we can get some defensive tackles second, third round. You might be able to get a, a, a guy like, you know, a tackle or something like that in the late rounds. You might be able to get a corner or a safety. There's a lot of DBs in this draft. Not a whole lot, but there's enough to where you don't have to jump out the window and get one in the first round. Now, listen, if one that's truly special, like Derek Stingley falls to you or Sauce Gardner, then that's a consideration. But you don't reach for a defensive back. You know what I mean? You don't reach for like an edge rusher or something like that. You go out there, you go get that wide receiver because you know what? If you get that wide receiver, now you have, and you hit on them properly, now you have the next Devontae Adams or Nuke Hopkins or something on your roster at their youngest. So when it's time to pay them, you that's a decision you got to make. But I would much rather do that than go out and go get a guy that I got to pay 30-something million dollars to every year. You know what I mean? I like I feel like a receiving core is, is, is best by the sum of their parts. So if you go out there and you go get a couple of guys that are veterans that have been successful in this league and you get a freak rookie, it, it you know, listen, man, the learning curve won't be as steep because you don't got to depend on them as much and you can get the excellent play from that rookie. Big boy Mario, my guy, you think we trade future picks and go up for two picks in the first round? No, I don't. The only way I would want to see the Raiders move that far up in the draft is if they went up to go get Kyle Hamilton. That's it. That's the only player I'm I'm trading up for in this draft. Kyle Hamilton has all pro kind of ability, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Al Bundy is the greatest quarterback of all time. Yes, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. He definitely is. <laughs> but yeah, man. So look, I have a list of free agents. Wait, hold on. 808. Let me, let me pull you back up, bro. Because we're gonna we're gonna do the chats for the first like 20 minutes and then we're gonna get into this. Hold on, I got a bot in here, y'all. I must be hot in here, man. I got bots, I got fucking porn popping up in here. I got everything popping up in here, yo. <laughs> Crazy. Yo, we need the vets to school our youngsters, which we don't have. And yo, bro, I understand that. But see, just because you go and you draft two defensive tackles doesn't mean you can't sign a veteran guy on the cheap and bring him in to bring these guys along. You know what I mean? So, like, listen, guys, you got to understand something. What you got to do is when you draft people, you draft them, you develop them. We got a great coaching staff. Then you watch and see what happens in free agency. There are a lot of people that are going to expect certain things that they're not going to get. It happens every year. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be surprise cuts that everybody's going to be like, wow, because a lot of these, these teams got to make decisions on these older players. And then you go and you sift through that and you bring them in especially when you have a good, strong positional group with young guys and you can sell a, a vet for coming here and taking a little less money to play the mentor role. You can definitely do that, man. Linnell Walker, poor drafting has hurt. Yeah, listen, Linnell, I felt like the Raiders, as many draft picks as John Gruden and Mike Mayock fucking blew through and fucked this team up with, we would have been, in, we could have been damn near in the Super Bowl with as many players as they passed on the Devin Whites of the world and the Ed Olivers. And I don't even want to go Josh Allen, not the quarterback, but the linebacker. I mean, bro, I don't even want to talk about it. It's shameful the way that they fucked over these drafts, man. AJ Red, salute to the homie Wasted. What's good? Thank you. Hey, yo, and look, we got 123 in here. It's growing. People are coming in. Y'all pulling up on me. Do me a favor, man. Yo, hit that thumbs up. If you're not already a part of the family, hit that subscribe button. We want this thing to continue to grow because, you know, listen, I don't deal with stagnation. If shit doesn't grow, I don't keep doing it. You know what I mean? So if you enjoy what I do, make sure y'all hit that, that thumbs up and that sub button. Blair Tinsley, what up, Wasted? Hope you're having a good day, my brother. Much love and respect. Much love and respect to you too, my brother. Thank you for pulling up on me. Thank you for pulling up on me. Cash Lord Raider, my dude. If I make it to Vegas to play flag football... You bring your perfect jersey. <laughs> Yo, Cash Lord, man. Everybody's selling a lot of wolf tickets about this game, man. I hope y'all bring extra hamstrings and ACLs with you, too. Everybody talking cash shit, man. <laughs> I just want to see. I think we got some people that are legends in their own mind talking about this damn football game, man. Listen, I am under no assumption that I am anywhere near what I used to be. So when I come out there, when we play that game, I'm going to get on the center, throw a couple of passes, Throw a touchdown and I'm gonna sit down. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> Wait a minute. All right, hold on. West Coast is the best coast. I'm stuck in Texas because Cali got too damn expensive. Then I don't want to hear your shit, Ready Critique. The West Coast, look, we had a little thing on Doxy's show earlier, man. I don't want to hear your bullshit, man. Listen, man, the Beast Coast is, is what's up, man. <laughs> Raphael, my hater has arrived. El Capitan, what is good with you, brother? I, you know, I, I saw you on Stu's show, man. <laughs> the flyer, wonderful Sarah Phillips. I love this community, too, and I appreciate all of you. Yo, Sarah, that's what's up, yo. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate all of y'all, man. This has been one of the great joys of my life to do this, man. For real, man. Valerie Lopez. Wasted. Frank Oakham played defensive tackle for Tampa Bay and the Houston Texans. Yeah, I know. He, he had a short NFL career, but he was impacted and he rubbed shoulders with some giants when it comes to defensive football. You know what I mean? So that means that he comes up under the Bill O'Brien's way of things. You know what I mean? He's rubbed shoulders with Rob Marinelli as well. So that's a good, that's damn sure a good thing, man. So, you know, the only thing about Frank Oakham is I wish that Rob Marinelli would have retired a little earlier. So maybe we could have made a run and bring back Coach Buck. Because I like Brinston Buckner, man. I think Brinston Buckner did a hell of a job. I don't understand why John, I, I do. I, I I guess if John Gruden, you know, I mean, he has such a history of, with, um, Rod Marinelli. And Rod Marinelli is why regarded widely regards one of the best defensive line coaches in history. I get why Gru did what he did, but I really wish they would have tried to keep Coach Buck in some kind of a fashion because I like Brinston Buckner, man. I wish we could have brought him back, man. Cash Lord Raider, listen, I'm not even putting that comment up. That dude is a fucking pervert, bro. Well, excuse my language, yo. Don't listen, bro. I got, I yo, I got too many women in my life I care about, man. I don't like guys like that, that do creepy shit. He's, he's in the joint right now. I don't respect anybody who do stuff like that. Fuck that guy. Dark Raider, you mean they keep their offense on the field? You want our defense on the field? Dark, I don't know what you mean by that, bro. You got to, you got to, you got to pull, put, put something back up in there, man. I don't know what you, I don't know. OG, what's up, OG. Stingley would never play for the Raiders. He would not disrespect his family like that. Bro, how do you know that, OG? See, OG, you make a lot of assumptions, bro. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't even know. I don't even think that Daryl Stingley and Jack Tatum even has a thing. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. I think that that whole situation was pieced up, if, if I remember correctly. But, OG, you making, yo, that, that's an assumption, bro. You got, listen, when you come on Raider Nation Unlimited, if I put your chat up, and, OG, I respect you because we've been in a lot of different situations. We, we You know, we always on lives together and stuff, and you one of the original Black Hole members. OG, you got to come with facts, bro. You can't just, just put out an assumption like that, brother. Valerie Lopez, by the end of the show, I'm going to get you the information. I know that we, we've we traded some of our draft picks. I think we're missing like a fifth rounder. I think we have like five picks this year, if, 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 I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll get you the, the answer. Oh, shit. We got shit in the chat. Everybody say Al Bundy's legendary. BS, Uncle Rico's the greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. He not fucking with my man Al Bundy, man. No, ma'am. You guys have no idea on the players we will get. It's going to be totally different than the past. David Summers, I'm hoping it is different than the past. But the thing is, is this, man. I can only go off of my old school Raider parano par paranoia. You know what I'm saying, bro? I, I need for them to come in and show and prove before I get in a situation where I trust them. They've done nothing yet. Listen, what we're not going to do, we're not going to have an argument about the great Al Bundy from Polk High. Four touchdowns in one game, Al Bundy. One of the greatest football players of all time. We're, we're not going to do that. Raider Purge. Facts, yo. That's what I'm looking for. Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame with Trayvon Mooring. Oh, my God. We'll have some of the we have one of the best safety tandems in football, bro. We need that shit, bro. That's something we've been missing a long time, bro. Up in here. Wasted. Would you roast me if I showed up to the draft in the Jamarcus Russell jersey? <laughs> Remember that game, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, bro. You already know. 
Listen, when I see you at the draft, Bill Gates, the roast is going to be on if you show up with that number two on your back, bro. <laughs> Kenny Williams, myself, I would take Donald over Adams any day. I hope we can find the next Aaron Donald. Yeah, bro. I, I, I fucking hope we can too, bro. But they, listen, Aaron Donald ain't growing on trees, bro. That's one of the fucking, one of the, the five or six best defensive linemen, interior defensive linemen ever, man. David Summers. So don't speculate on what's going to happen. You have no idea. David Summers, you must have come in here to argue, yo. So listen, man, if you don't want to hear me speculate on what's going to happen, bro, by all means, King, you don't got to be here. But but yeah, you're still watching me, right? So just listen to me be excellent, motherfucker. Come on now. <laughs> Zeph, you tapped in 100%. My brother, you always here, brother. You always add value to the chat, man. Love you for that, bro. Raider for VA, you just paid the tab. You got wasted with me. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tazi, Saso, what's going on, man? The game only goes, listen, Tazi, I'm telling you, that game is going to last less than a quarter. That game going to be a, a strong 25 minutes, bro. <laughs> hey, yo, fuck you. I, I don't think you're going you gonna to make the cut at quarterback for the East, man. I, I, like me and Stu playing quarterback for the East. You know, you know, Stu, Stu was a quarterback in high school. Stu said he running the wishbone, man. So I don't know, man. <laughs> Kenny Williams, the best rated talk. Real shit, bro. I appreciate you, my dude. I appreciate you for pulling up on me every day, too, man. Richard Lyon, I'm in the East Coast myself. My brother wasted. Thank you, bro. All right. So here's some questions before we get into the second part of this shit. Name in Washington. Who could we bring in to help boost our O line? Or do we draft our O lineman? See, like for me, bro, it all depends on what O lineman is there. Like there are two offensive linemen that are gigantic, bro. Um, Falele is 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 I don't know if I'm pronouncing that the, the brother you know from Australia. He's six nine. He's an animal. You know what I mean? He's like Makai Becton. But they, they got him projected as a second rounder. The kid out of Minnesota. I would bring him in if he was on a board in the second round. And my defensive tackles were gone. I would, or 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 there was a run of guys that I can have, like John Ridgeway and all them guys were still on the board. I would definitely, definitely bring in, you know, Philly because the, he's the kind of left tackle or the right. You could put him at right. You can put that kid over there and forget about the tackle excuse for a long time. You got a young left tackle in Colton Miller. You'll have him. Then you got Alex Leatherwood, who we drafted to be our right tackle, but it didn't work out. But I think he can be an All Pro guard if, if people come and work with the kid you know what i'm saying so for me bro yo now you got that you got a young center and then now you got to address the guard position and now your offensive line is set for Derek carr or whomever might come after him so you already know bro that, that's what kind of shit i'm on yo but talk that shit bro i appreciate you dark raider you want to argue again? let me guess car haters be like car drafted that tra oh my god come on man that's pretty that's fucking that's kind of weak bro Come on, Dark Ray, you let me down, my dude. Listen, yo, your man Dark Agent Red told you, man, get wasted and pay your tab, man. Hit them likes up, get that subscribe button up. So name it. Who can we bring in the, like I just said, yo, Philelli, we can go out there, we can go get our, our, our man from the Jets. We can we can get Morgan Moses. You know what I mean? I'm I'm really, to be honest with you, I would rather us go out and go get some veteran help on the offensive line because we got so many young guys on the offensive line. That shit does wonders for guys like that. You know what I mean? Like, you see what happened when we brought in Richie Incognito for Colton Miller. That was what he needed to get a little bit nastier on the line and hit motherfuckers. So that's exactly what we need to do, bro. Yeah, my dude. Coach Buck was off. What's going on? Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Kerry Williams, I live 50 miles from Cincinnati. Not a fan of the Bengals, but surrounded by their fans. Lived in Valley Vallejo, I don't know, when I was 13. Been a Raider fan since 73. Salute to you, Kerry Williams. Salute. Raider critique. We should have brought him back, but no Gruden. Had the friendship thing going on. Yeah, Coach Buck was a good coach, bro. But you know, like, at the end of the day, it's not like he brought in a bum-ass coach. He brought in Rob Marinelli, for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Like, Rob Marinelli kind of helped Warren Sapp and them get to where they were. So you kind of can't, you can't really say that, bro. You know what I mean? I get it, though. 
I get it. Michael Guerrero, what's the deal? My my hater has arrived. Fade two, what's good with you, brother? What's good with you? El Peso Luna, Fatusma, Scooby Doo, De Raiders. I don't know. Wasted. Who do you think is a playmaker coming out this year? Listen, bro, I tell y'all every day, and I'm a, I'm I'm about to stop saying it because I don't want people to hear me too loud. I want the Raiders to pick up Trey Lon Burks. The guy has Andre Johnson kind of talent written all, all over him. Listen, I'm also a big proponent and fan of Jameson Williams out of Alabama. It's just that I need to see what J. Monee look like. Like, I'm not trying to draft no hurt player. You know what I'm saying? Like Reggie McKenzie used to do. We got burnt with that shit way too much. You know what I mean? So, like, that's my thing. But if you get J-Mo in the second or the third round, I I'm with that. But I'm not taking him with the 22nd. It all it all depends. Sir Lister of Smeg, the only reason Stingley won't play for the Raiders is because he probably won't be there at 20, 22. But if he's there and we draft him, he's stuck sucking up and play. Yo, bro, like, that's that shit is ancient history, bro. That guy, he, he played for the Raiders. Listen, that's what happens in football. Sometimes catastrophic things happen. I don't think Jack Tatum meant that. And and Daryl Stingley was just unfortunate. is a long time ago, man. So I, I definitely, definitely don't think that. Yo, <laughs> Matt Marinovich, facts. Y'all better be careful. Stu won't be throwing them fucking bullets, man. Stu is a Raider, man. Stu, Stu played five years in the National Football League, man. He still is, you know what I'm saying? He still is a special talent, you know? Raider Court says, what's good with you, bro? Oh, my God. Thank you for the super chat. Yee! -yee. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, one. Thank you, my brother. Now, all right, listen, yo. And see, Matt Marinovich, I'm thinking this, too. See, what you got to look at, yo, I think Illuminor might be our right tackle, bro. I think we have our incumbent right tackle on the, on the roster, man, because if you look at it, the Patriots, if they know nothing else, they know how to develop linemen, man. And I'm going to, you know, I wish I could share my screen with this. But I'm just going to read this information off to y'all, how good the Patriots have been the last few years with offensive linemen, bro. So when you look at the way that the grades out for the New England Patriot linemen, man, Isaiah Wynn, Ted Karras, David Andrews, Shaq Mason, and Trent Brown, all were, were, were over rated over like a, a 70, right? Yo, Michael Owenu was pro football focus had him ranked at an 88 they had him ranked as their best lineman and he was sitting on a bench but pro football focus be bullshit sometimes so you really can't get too fucking like into what pro football focus says but i'm telling you something the patriots had one of the best offensive lines in football they developed it and illuminor played over there with josh mcdaniels and all of them so there's a very very good chance that they already have their incumbent right tackle and listen i just feel like Tom Cable with that zone blocking scheme likes little fast offensive linemen. The Patriots do the power blocking scheme, and I think that's more well set for Derek. And it's a lot, lot better for Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is not a big guy. He needs big people in front of him. He needs that, man. Yo, this day and age, my guy, thank you. You paid that tab, man. Thank you, my brother. All right, order the top six wide receiver. And the order I take them at 22. Top wide receiver, Traylon Burks. The second to top wide receiver, of course, is Drake London. The third wide receiver off my board is going to be surprising, man. But I'm going to say Jamison Williams, man. Because J-Mo, even though J-Mo hurt his knee, J-Mo was a beast. You know what I'm saying? My fourth one off the board would be Chris Olave. And my sixth one would be Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson does everything well. He just doesn't flash on film to me with the speed and everything. But he's one of them guys that will come into the league and, and do a lot better than what everybody says, man. Michael, do I remember Eric Turner? Hell yeah, I remember the safety. Yeah, he passed away, man. He was he was, he was was excellent. I loved Eric Turner, man, from the Browns originally, and then he played for us. Yeah, I definitely remember him, yo. Pyro, man, thank you for putting the link. Yo, come get wasted with me every day, y'all. Do me a favor. Go in this link. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe, yo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute. Oh, my man. Dan, thank you, brother. Good contact. I think the Raiders should go O-line and wide receiver. Yo, Fort yo, man, thank you for the donation, bro. $49.99. I think the Raiders should go O-line and wide receiver and free agency. What do you think? I wouldn't mind trading for Brandon Cooks, who played for New England. 
this way we don't pay wide receiver. Yeah, man, and we, we can pray for the wide receiver. We won at 22. Then that's exactly what me, I've been saying that, Doc's been saying that, we all been saying that. I would, my pick in free agency wouldn't even be Devontae Adams. Like, I don't want to pay a wide receiver 30 million bucks, bro. Like, yo, you go get a Brandon Cooks, you go get a DJ Shark, you draft a kid. Now you fill that receiver room up because we got a lot of players on this on this roster that aren't there anymore, bro. There are a lot of guys that aren't there no more. And I think that you got to have a, like a, a full room of guys who can do different things because, yo, you can't win every game the same way. When you have a team that can't be like flexible, that those are teams that lose in the National Football League. Yo, 203 people in the room, y'all. Thank y'all for pulling up a wasted today. Jason Luce. Sup, Wasted. Love your content. Keep up the great work. Have yet to disagree with any of your views. I agree with you on Burks. I watched this film. He's a playmaker. That's all we need. Thank you, brother. Listen, that's what I'm here to do, man. Listen, it's the United Nations of the Raider Nation. I try to bring y'all all together. You know what I mean? Kerry Williams. They didn't want Incognito in Miami because his teammate said he was a bully. That's a true Raider. Look at the great days of or the good old days of La La Zeta and Tatum. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look. Bully or not, as long as he come in, he ball the fuck out. I don't even care, yo. Straight laced. I don't care. I remember you saying you're not high on Jordan Davis. Do you think he's reached his peak and potential in college and won't excel in the NFL? I think he has to be in the right situation. And I think Jordan Davis can't be the savior on somebody's defense. If he's if he has to be your savior, then you're in trouble. If he goes to a talented football team. Because I don't even think like, everybody's talking about Jordan Davis getting us. I think Jordan Davis isn't getting past the, the, the Chargers. The Chargers are going to draft Jordan Davis. So when you look at it, him playing next to Bosa and all them guys, he's not the savior. He's a piece. Then he plays well. Then you can rotate him in and in and out. But for us, we've had so many bad draft picks in the first round that if this draft pick doesn't work, people are going to lose hope very, very quickly for the new regime. And that's the problem, yo. We need to make sure if we do nothing, we draft a guy who is going to be a, a long-term starter in this draft. That's why I have no problem with the Raiders, even if Tyler Linderbaum fell to us. We already have a center, but Tyler Linderbaum is so good. I draft Tyler Linderbaum, plug him in that center, and he'd be our center like on some Jim Otto shit probably for a long time, bro. We just do something, trade Andre James. Everybody's looking for a starting level center. Stu, <laughs> be honest. A lot of these content creators, cleat chasing. Wait. Uh, yeah, I ain't going to put that. I, didn't even, I shouldn't even have put that up. Michael, listen, bro. Stu's a great guy. You know what I mean? A lot of NFL players wouldn't even come on our programs, bro. Stu taps in with all of us, man. He gives knowledge. He gets value. And, yo, he played five years in the National Football League. He was a good, great player at Purdue. We respect Stu. Don't don't put no dirt on Stu name. I fucks with Stu like that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of players that will look down on content creators and guys who never played in the National Football League and wouldn't even have a conversation with us. So you got to respect somebody who was in between them lines. You got to respect somebody who actually received paychecks from Al Davis, who actually had conversations and played against some of the people that are in the Hall of Fame that we, you know, that we, we, we revere. You know what I mean? You can't look at it like that, my brother. No disrespect to you, bro, but you can't look at it like that. You gotta give you gotta give Stewart's flowers, man. Enrique Moreno, what's up, ways to keep the content? You on every live. Thank you, brother. I know you are, man. I see that and I appreciate you, my brother. Salute, Boomer Raider. Salute. I wore Turner's jersey at the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Turner was a beast, bro. It's so sad what happened. I think he had stomach cancer or something, right? Eric Turner was the man, bro. Thor, what's up, my brother? You going to pull up later? Raider Loco, great contact, my dog, for the 999 donation. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate that, man. Thank y'all. Gotti got it, Simmons. Waste, bro. I'm feeling like we won't get the wide receiver we want at 22, so I'm thinking we go ahead and get Winfrey at that 22nd pick and go get Travis Jones in the second round before somebody goes and gets him. Bro, I really wouldn't be mad at that, dog. Like, especially like Perion Winfrey, bro. I'm hoping that he fall into the second round, bro. I'm hoping, but Perion Winfrey got all the tools as far as a pass rushing defensive tackle, and you see what that gets you. Because a lot of people used to complain about Aaron Donald not being good against the run. That's something that could be developed in the weight room a lot of the times, man. So, and and knowing the scheme, knowing what gap to be in and stuff like that. 
So I wouldn't mind taking Perrion Winfrey because if you got the right coaches in here, you could develop Perrion. You know what I mean? I would take him definitely. Chuck, my guy, what's your evaluation of Garrett Wilson? I think Garrett Wilson is a talented wide receiver, but I think Garrett Wilson ate the way he did because Chris Olave was on the other side. I think Chris Olave is the better player, and I think that Garrett Wilson is a late first rounder and an early second rounder. I personally, as the Raiders, I don't, I'm not a big Garrett Wilson guy. I, I've watched some film on Garrett Wilson, man. You know, he's fast. He's a decent route runner, but he's not the explosive athlete that I want to take in the first round. Like, yo, I want, and see, this is just me, right? I want somebody that, like, and, and I know this is a bad metric, right? But if we're going to take a wide receiver in the first round, I want the next guy. Like, yo, like Jamar Chase, like Jefferson. Like DJ Met, DK Metcalf, that's what I want. I want the next guy. I don't see that from him. So if I'm going to take you in the first round, if you're not that kind of guy, then I, I like I say either trade down or get a solid position of need. So if you can shore up the middle of your offensive line, you shore that up. If you can, you know, shore up the middle of your trenches of your defensive line, you do that. But you don't reach on a wide receiver because there's so much free agent wide receiver help out there that you can, you can get on the cheap and you can fill that room up with two or three guys in free agency. And then next time you just wait on your guy. You're wasted. You think we will get a star player this offseason, any position that we need? See, that's subjective, one, because – and thank you for the 999 donation, bro. That's subjective, man, because if you really, really look at it, right, what it's about is it's about how do they fit into the system like new England. And when them guys were in new England, they didn't have a lot of superstar players. They don't need a lot of superstar players as long as people play their role. So that's very, very subjective. Do I think we're going to get superstar players off season? No, I really don't. I think we're going to get guys that are solid veterans that were superstars, or we're going to get guys that nobody really was thinking about. You know what I mean? Or we're going to get some young free agents that a lot of people that fly under the radar. That's more of their, 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 their steep. Because if you look at the fact that, yo, they know they're, they're not thinking about just this year. They're trying to build the blocks for the future. They know they got to pay Max. They know they got to pay Hunter Renfro. They got to pay Darren Waller or Darren Waller might want to leave. Cause you know, he's attached to clutch sports. I'm hearing some things that I'm that's, that sound a little disturbing to me that Darren Waller might want to move on for bigger and better and greener pastures supposedly, you know what I mean? So, Boom. Raider critique. Ruggs was a damn good pick. He well just, yeah, yeah, Ruggs was, man. He, you know, I thought Henry Ruggs and, and Hunter Renfro were like a new era of Cliff Branch and Fred Belitnikoff. I really do, man. Coach Dante, thanks for pulling up, brother. Stewart is a great person, man. He allowed me to come on his stream, and he didn't even know me at, at, at all the talk football. He's a great guy. Thank you, man. Give Stu his flowers, man. Stu Schweiger is the fucking man. I like Stu, man. Stu, good people. Corey Turner, what's good, fam? From Youngstown, Ohio. Shout out to you. Salute to you, my brother. Salute. Does Stu ever say he was the greatest? Like, yeah, look, guys, it's all good. We've got that shit straightened out. Stu is the man. There will be no Stu slander accepted on my live, yo. I fucks with Stu like that. He's a good guy. Sometime in the future, you would like to see Kenneth Walker III wearing the Las Vegas. Yeah, man. That would be a, that would be a nice sight, bro. Damn, no doubt, man. Just draft good players. The problem with Gruden was they would reach for a need. You can't be drafting second and third round talent in the first round. And, word, and the thing about it is with John Gruden, John Gruden is a shitty talent evaluator. Let's just fucking call it out. He never drafted anybody. That was really worth like the last draft pick that he that he did that really hit, man, was a keep to lead. He drafted Bear Rudd. Bear Rudd was all right. You know what I mean? But yeah, John Groot is a shitty talent evaluator, man. He should never, he's a he's a good coach. He should never, ever fucking be the, the main talent evaluator, bro. Sketch therapy. What's up, my guy? I think getting hit by NFL players is a hard job. Might get paid well. It's going to hurt. That's why some players get shot through the heart to show the pain in their brain to sacrifice to the other players. Yeah, I guess so, bro. Oh, man, yo, thank you. Welcome to the family, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the family, bro. Wasted. Look at Deuce Watts. Yo, somebody else asked me to look at Deuce Watts. I'm going to do a little film breakdown with him 
And I'm going to get back to y'all on that, bro. I'm going to get back to y'all on that. Yo, so look, boom, because you know how we do, man. We read the chats, and then we get into the meat of the, of the show. Pause. The Raiders will offer Hassan Reddick a Matthew Judon type of deal. Judon has six sacks at 28. Next offseason, he got signed by the Pats. This season, Reddick had 11 and a half sacks and is younger than Judon. Bro, I pray they – but, yo, you, Steven, you heard me say I want Hassan Reddick here because Hassan Reddick can play with his hand on the ground and he can drop in the coverage and he's play standing up. And with these multiple different formations and fronts that we're going to be bringing with Patrick Graham, I mean, Patrick Graham's going to play everything. Hassan Reddick is a guy that you sign and he does not come off the field. Latif Cooks, David Bell, the wide receiver, is a game breaker. The problem is he has some issues, man. He has some other issues that is going to make him fall in the draft. I would take a flyer on David Bell no earlier than the fourth round. That's just me, man. I'm not trying to – in the first two rounds, no way I'm getting David Bell. He has other – he has physical limitations and issues. Oh, my – thank you, my brother. What's my thoughts on Jahan? He looking great to me. Jahan – like I said, Jahan Dawson is is – a solid one. It's nothing that Jahan Dotson does that is not excellent. He has he has really, really good speed. He doesn't have like blinding Henry Rugg speed. He has really good speed, probably like a four or five guy, sub four or five guy. He he has great ball skills. He has great hands. The problem with Jahan Dotson and the reason why I don't want him at number 22 is that I don't think Jahan Dotson is going to pop in a way where like a Jefferson or a Chase is going to pop. And if I'm going to go big and I'm going to go wide receiver first round, this is a guy that's getting first round money. I don't want to draft a guy that's just a good wide receiver. I want a guy that is as a physical marble. I don't see the physical freak kind of receiver profile that I'm looking for for Derek Carr. You know what I mean? So. Raider 805. We don't need talented players. We need to get playmakers on both sides of the ball. We, they need to have talent, Raider 805. What you talking about? They got to be talented, bro. I mean, come on. They just don't have to be – like, listen, you got to build a team and not a collection of talent. That's the thing. That's what the Patriots do. That's what good football teams do. They build a team, not a collection of talent. Yo, I love that the nation is hanging out too, Jack. And appreciate y'all on a Saturday afternoon. No way to spend it for all your Raider brothers and sisters and with me, Wasted Talent. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, my brother. Okay, so look, this is what we're going to do, right? I am going to go. Oh, wait, Agent Red has something to say that's that's relevant. It was all, I'd always felt like Gruden thought he was the smartest guy in the room and always, I, yeah, bro. See, I hate guys like that, man. Dirty Reek was good, my brother. Raider Purge, if we trade up for Kyle Hamilton, what would we... If yo Kyle Hamilton is so excellent, bro, they'd have to give up next year's number one or probably a, a first and a second. I'm willing to give up a first and a second and another second next year, straight up. Do I think Edwards is done, bro? I, I don't see the Brian Edwards isn't a good route runner, and in the, in the Patriots system, you got to be a good route runner. I don't listen. I don't see him making it, bro. I don't. And, and, and the thing is, he, he drops the ball all the goddamn time, man. Told y'all the other day, I told you, that's, that's Roberto Duran Jr. Jr., the hands of stone. <laughs> Jeffrey Aguayo, we need to make it past the first round in the playoffs. We are almost there. We just need to stay healthy and play as one unit. We can go far. Yeah, man, but you know what? They got to rebuild this roster too, bro. They got to rebuild this roster. There's a lot of guys that was here last year that you're going to look up and down this roster. They are not going to be here, bro. Boomer Raider. Nelson Aguilar was balling for us. It was last year, before last year. We should not. Yo, bro, do you know how much money the Patriots paid Nelson Aguilar, bro? Boomer Raider, I want you to go do your homework, right? Go look how much money, because he was an unrestricted free agent. Go look how much money the Patriots paid him, and you will say differently. Trust me, bro. 805, ways to love your content. It's real. You know your shit. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, Nelson is under contract for two more years, definitely. Omar, $2 donation. Thank you, brother. Yeah, Carson Strong could be the best quarterback in his draft. He has a lot of measurables. He's very, very accurate and stuff. But the thing is, you got to look at who he's playing against, bro. 
So we can't just 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 canonize him and say that he's the you know what I mean, bro. You can't, bro. You really can't. So look, y'all, look. I had a little list of because, like I said to y'all earlier in this episode, right? I had a list of free agents that were um some of the ones that I think are the best ones that are under 25 years old. Of websites and and I'm gonna share some of that with you, you know what I mean? Because before I come on the air, I don't come on these ears un, this air unprepared, right? So, look, this is what we got. We got some honorable mentions: Derek Barnett, Edge, David and Joku, who's an unrestricted free agent. Y'all keep an eye on that because you know how the Patriots love to run those two tight end sets. I would love to see David and Joku next to Darren Waller. That'd be scary. That'll be borderline scary, bro. I would love that. And then we talk about addressing our need at guard. Connor Williams from the Cowboys. Nice, solid guard and James Daniel. DJ Sharp, too, is another guy that's under 25 years old that I've been screaming for the Raiders to bring in. Everybody says he's had injury problems. Who the fuck hasn't had an injury in the National Football League? Bring the kid in. Guys, let me ask y'all in the chat. What would y'all think about bringing in Juju Smith-Schuster, man? I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster is under 25 years old. He's an unrestricted free agent. But he carries his fair share of concerns if you do bring him in, right? His highs have been higher than his lows, though. You know, he has kind of fallen off the map since A.B. left, man. When he was partnered with Antonio Brown, he was beasting out. Shit, in 2018, Smith-Schuster had caught like 111 passes. He had like 1,430 yards almost, right? However, Juju Smith-Schuster, is he's been productive replacing Brown in, in – Pittsburgh, you know, he had 1,380 yards in uh, 2019 and 2020 before being limited to five games with a shoulder injury. But, I mean, do you think Juju could be a guy you could bring in and put him – because he normally does a lot of his damage in a slot, but would you put Juju Smith-Schuster on the outside and bring in an X receiver, like an X, a, a, a number one receiver, man? My thoughts on – Ray to Ray, my thoughts on grabbing – Chris Godwin, I would, I like Chris Godwin. He's coming off of a major injury. It depends on if the price is right, though. I don't want to pay Chris Godwin like he's fucking like a number one. I don't think, I think Chris Godwin's a really good number two. I don't think he's a number one receiver. And I think he's going to try to get paid like that. Sup, wasted. I personally don't like Juju, but he has potential. See, I don't like the clown shit. I think Juju got a lot of talent. I don't like all of the TikTok and the dancing and all of, that bullshit. I can't stand that. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand that. Wait, hold up. Hold up. I saw something about Josh. Wasted. Would you trade Josh Jacobs if he gets hurt a lot? Bro, I'm, I am I get off of the Josh Jacobs train. Unless Josh Jacobs comes in and has an Emmitt Smith kind of season this year. Like, for me to consider re Josh Jacobs up or let's, let's go more, more, more fucking recent times. A Zeke Elliott, a kind of, you know, I mean, just just a number one Taylor, like the kidding in, in with the Colts. If he had that kind of a season, then you gotta keep him. Cause how can you explain that to the fan base? But if he has one of them seasons where he just barely gets a thousand yards and he has like four or five touchdowns, there's no way I'm extending Josh Jacobs. He can go. Running backs are one of the easiest positions that project into the National Football League. You pretty much know the player you're gonna have based off of how they play in college. Like look at Najee Harris. So I personally wouldn't fuck around with him. Kerry Williams, a free agent, offensive lineman, a good wide receiver, be it from the draft to free agency, another great linebacker like Perriman in the corner. You need more than that, brother. You need a lot more than that. But, yo, I'm looking at, like, Stephon Gilmore. I would love that. Ray, my brother, thank you for pulling up, man. Yo, thank you, brother. Appreciate you for sending the cavalry over here, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Listen, I stay far away from Coop. He just, I, I, I'm cool. I, I've been off Coop ever since he got his chain snatched and ain't do nothing about No, that, that was Michael Crabtree. I'm buck. No, when he got his head slammed by Pac Man Jones, I was like, what a little bitch. I don't want him on the Raiders no more. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton is a sneaky pick. And he had Wentz and see, T.Y. Hilton is not leaving. He's not leaving Indianapolis. He's either going to stay there and fucking retire or he's out. 
Raid, they, they shouting you out of here. We got a celebrity in here, legend, Raid, Raid from Raid the Tape is in here. Thank you, Raid. Appreciate you, my brother. So listen, here is another guy that's under 25. That's a free agent. And this is a guy that a lot of us are saying that we should pick up is Christian Kirk. You know, Christian Kirk doesn't have that number one wide receiver potential. He might not be a number two either because he's a small dude. But he's a tremendous option in the slot. And just because we got rim for it doesn't mean that they can't alternate being in a slot. So, like, yo, dude had psh, shit, man. He had over four seasons in Arizona, man. He caught 236 passes. He had 3,000 yards, almost a 17 touchdowns as a, a slot specialist. So that's a guy we might want to take a flyer on. Here's another name that is a guy you might not be familiar with. He's from the Dallas Cowboys, though. Dalton Schultz, you know, he's a Cowboy tight end. He isn't an elite pass catcher. You know, he's been trending towards the upper tier for the last two years. You know what I mean? Of course, 63 passing, 615 yards and four touchdowns this, past, this last past season. And he caught 78 touchdowns and eight scores. No, that was 2019. And then last year, he did the 78 passes for 800 yards, man. He was 75% on catches when the ball was thrown to him. So I would definitely, definitely take a look at that kid and bring him in. I brought this brother up on Doxer's show today, man. Um, Jordan Whitehead, Tampa Bay Buccaneer safety, man. He's never been a pro bowler or anything like that. But Whitehead, Whitehead appeared in 14 games and finished the season with 73 tackles and eight pass defenses broken up in two picks. You know what I'm saying? And this is a guy who played through injury. So, listen, I'm a big proponent of looking at that guy. Self-made, my brother, you back, man. Thank you for pulling up on me. Wasted. I would like Morgan Moses as right tackle, free agent from the Jets. I feel Alex will stay at right guard and Moses. Yo, I would love that, man. But I'm just saying, just don't be shocked if they don't make a move and they bring in, they let Illuminor stay there because he played under the Patriots system. You know what I'm saying? So don't be surprised, brother. Don't be surprised. Yo, Quentin Booker, I'm not saying it, bro. I would love for like, bro, if we got Evan Ingram, that'll be like having Gronk and Aaron Hernandez, yo. Like, I would love them to bring Aaron Hernandez. Like, I, like Aaron Hernandez. Oh, my Lord. But Evan Ingram. Like, Evan Ingram coming in with Derek, that'll be awesome. Because Derek Carr loves throwing to his tight ends, man. Sean Johnson, realistic offseason. Right tackle Moses. Stephon Gilmore, cornerback. Jordan Whitehead at safety. And Allen Robinson. That's yo. That's more than motherfucking. That's more than 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 that, bro. That's that's a dream off season, bro. Sketch therapy. What's up, bro? What, what, what's your question, bro? Yo, we got two sixty in the chat, brother. It's a lot of people in here, man. It's just raining facts up in here, bro. Bill Gates wasted. You fucking with any OTs in the first round? No alpha dogs. Nah, I'm not fucking with none, bro. I'm not fucking with no offensive tackles, bro. Oh, you talking about Aaron Hernandez? Oh, Aaron Hernandez is dead, bro. He's dead. I'm just making the juxtaposition between what that was like having Gronk and Aaron Hernandez together when they were Brady. Aaron Hernandez, he, he's dead, bro. He hung himself in the, in, in the joint, bro. You know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> Howard Austin caught my guy getting that cash, man, live. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you for pulling up on me, my dude. Yo, listen, I'll take Marcus Williams too. But, Quentin, what you got to understand is Marcus Williams is one of the best safeties in the league, bro. You're not like, bro, that's like premium, premium free agent right there. And he's under 25 years old, bro. So y'all got to understand. Y'all got to pay that tab too, bro. Hit them likes, hit them, them subscribers, yo. So, look. Yo, I've heard of Zaquandre White, man. We were talking about him yesterday. Andy was going to send me some tape so I could take a look at him, but I'm, I'm going to take a look at him. Jack McKenna. Why Ingram? Do you feel Foster can't get it done? Bro, I think that Evan Ingram is so much more talented physically than Foster Moreau. And also, I have doubts about Foster Moreau. I have reason. Like, listen, one thing John Gruden always said is if you don't know the playbook, you're not going to play. Why didn't John Gruden use him more? Think about that. And there's a lot of plays that I see Foster Moreau with Derek throw to him, and he's nowhere in the vicinity of where he's supposed to be. 
So what that tells me with my eyes, I don't know this to be true. So this is just my summation that Foster Moreau isn't a guy that's in his playbook enough. So, yeah, I, and Evan Ingram, he has off the chart kind of talent, bro, off the charts. He's almost as talented as Darren Wallace, in some ways even more. Got he got it. What do you think about Amik Robinson? Is he done or Graham will get him right? Amik Robinson is so damn little, bro. For him to be effective in the National Football League, he got to be like Antoine Winfield. So we, and I'm not talking about junior, but senior. He has to be excellent for him to make a play with all these big receivers and people just scheme ways to take advantage of his lack of size. So I hope that Amit can come back. I'm praying he can come back. But I don't think Amit Robinson is going to make this roster, bro. I don't. Yeah, Marcus Williams will go to the Lions and play for Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell. I doubt that, bro. Nobody wants to go to the armpit of the National Football League. Yo, stack them Lunchables up. SC experience was good. <laughs> I'm good, my brother. I'm good. How are you? How are you, man? Amik is bigger than the Honey Badger, but he ain't better than the Honey Badger, though. And that's the difference. Like, what are we talking about here, Cash Lord? That, like, come on, we already know, man. We already know. Honey Badger is carving out a damn Hall of Fame career almost. You think there's still hope for Farrell? Is he? I think it's hope for Klee. I think Klee can play under these with these coaches. A lot of the stuff that they do is probably similar to what was going on at Clemson, man. I think Klee Farrell would be an excellent guy to keep around because he can play in both formations. I remember one game Carr yelled at Foster with a lineup before the snap. And I saw that game too. I'm telling you, man, I think it's something, something's not right there with Foster Moreau. He's one of them guys that I feel like you got to let him go for, for him to fly. So I think if fire, Foster Moreau leaves the Raiders, he'll understand that this business is different and you got to take it more serious because I, I just believe that. And it always happens, man. Sometimes it happens to us when we get rid of somebody a little too early, but. Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm not a big Foster Moreau guy, man. <laughs> yo, yo, Eric, they called you, man, they called you a go-good gangster, bro. The Lunchable, the, the Lunchable Kingpin, bro. Wait, so did you bring Solomon, Jefferson, and Phylon back? No on Solly. Solly can kick rocks. Jefferson, yes. Phylon, because of the catastrophic knee injury, I love his motor and everything, but it depends on how that rehab goes. I probably wouldn't because he tore his knee up and he's a big guy, man. He's such a big guy, man. Clear is a bust from the old regime. You have to wash your hands and move on from that guy. Wish him the best. Nothing against the kids. See, Dominique, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, bro. Like, I got a way to fix Cleveland Farrell and Jonathan Abram. I think they should move and, and listen, Andy said this first. He was breaking the film down. We were both breaking it down the other night. Let me tell you something. Jonathan Abram is a linebacker. His whole skill set, everything he does well, is him being a will linebacker, filling gaps and making tackles in the open field and deflecting passes. He doesn't have the flexibility in his hips to get around and run and chase somebody 20, 30 yards down the field anymore. He just and He's not old, but he just never had that. He doesn't have that elite skill set to be able to, you know, to turn around in a drop of the dime. And that's, if you ever noticed, we played the Kansas City Chiefs. When they got to have a touchdown, they always pick on him. Yo, Sadig, right? So we start talking about, you know, our free agents. I had also saw something a little, I don't know, disturbing. I don't know how true it is, yo. But there was, there was a story that was put out about Mark Davis and Derek Carr's contract, you know, negotiation. I'm going to get into it with y'all real, real quick, man, because I know we don't want to get into too much car shit. But this offseason, off you know, people are saying that, you know, if Derek gets $40 million, it might not be that simple. Mark Davis isn't known to meddle in the football operations, but Carr's looking to be paid around $40 million a season per reports. And, uh, Considering the steep price, 
Mark Davis is going to be closely involved in his contract, and he might not want to give him that contract. I heard Mark Davis say stuff like, after games, what do you think about Derek? He'll say, you know, great quarterbacks win games. That's what makes you great. So that's the, the cut that Mark Mark Davis is on. Mark Davis is on that kind of time. So listen, man, the, the Raiders might walk away from Carr because the owner steps in. Who knows, right? Who knows, man? Who fucking knows, man? You're wasted. I think Alice Caps from Tampa Bay would be a great, but yo, would he, bro? But they're not letting this guy get out the door, bro. Trust and believe. Look, some of these free agents, bro, these people know what time it is. They are not getting them, bro. SC experience. What do you mean? Who's a who's a a, a, a new age Cordell? What Cordell Volson six seven three? He's a he's a beast. That's the, he got the one thing you can't teach size. I mean, if you got a man that's that big and you can't teach him how to play some damn football, then you've lost it. You've lost. Thank you for the great content. Made my drive home not so bad. Now, let's uh, run good at the poker game. That's what I'm talking about. Red Nation all day. Yo, good luck to you, bro. Salutations to you. Dustin White, that's not true. Mark was the one that crafted car, that drafted car. You can go look it up. Bro, whatever. But Mark Davis did say great quarterbacks win games. When people were trying to give Derek his flowers too early. That's exactly what Mark Davis said. He said something slick. I think got their asses massacred a couple years ago on Sunday Night Football by the fucking Washington Redskins. Wasted. What do you think of Bradbury from the Giants? Rumor is, yo, I would love if, if Bradbury came here. Bradbury is perfect for our system. He's the, the I think Bradbury is going to, James Bradbury is going to want to here with us. He's going to be one of our centers. I would love to have Bradbury and Stephon Gilmore and like a free agent wide receiver or two as guests. That'd be dope. All right, we got some more. Hold on. Wasted. Wait, here we go. This will be a season to learn if Cleek is sticking to 3 4. His cap number is almost $10 million this year. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Here we go. Here we go with the. Listen, y'all. Derek Carr is Lord Voldemort in, in my room. It's Lord Voldemort. He is he who shall not be named, damn it. We're not going to be arguing about D.C. up in here, y'all. Come on, man. Carr has 40 turnovers in two years. Yeah, 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 yeah. One million for each turnover. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, self-made? Conversely, I would rather to have to not come back. I want the team to be good enough so we don't got to come back. I want to see a few blowouts that we're not on the receiving end of. Get tired of going down to the same three plays at the end of the game and fucking cardiac kids and shit. Yo, it always comes down to DC, y'all. It always comes down to DC. So y'all listen, man. I'm getting tired. I'm beat. Thank y'all for pulling up on me. Much love to all of y'all. Much love, Eddie Ferragamo, yo. I'm going to close this live down, yo. Thank you for pulling up the Raider Nation Unlimited, man. I'm your man, Wasted Talent, bro. And, yo, tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that sub button, yo. And come back and kick it with me, you know, the next time we pull up, man. Because, yo, we're going to have more news, things are happening over this, this this weekend. And, yo, like my man just said, defense still wins championships. We'll see this year. You damn right. Matt Murray's car and Devontae was signed for, uh, a contract for five years, $100 million. You think they lit it together? The flying wonderful Sarah Phillips. Have a good day. And I'm going to get you as one of my mods. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm reading these last comments and I'm going to shut it down. Mark had mentioned he would make it known about Carr's future before he picks the coach. You're welcome, y'all. You're welcome, y'all. Peace out, y'all. I appreciate y'all, man. Pull up on me the next time, y'all.